Nahoa School Audio The Zohar on Man's Relationship with Nature As you may know, the Zohar is organised according to the weekly scriptural readings. I don't think it was a coincidence that the reading of the Zohar for this week started by discussing man's relationship with the creation. When we've witnessed big natural disaster occurring on the coast of the United States, it certainly gives us pause for thought. The Zohar starts. Rabbi Chia opened his discourse. The scripture says, The blossoms were seen in the land, the time of the nightingale has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. This is from the Song of Songs. The meaning of this is when God created the world, he put into the world all the forces that it needed. But the earth did not produce any fruits until man was created. Only when man was created did the land reveal the fruit and the powers that had been invested in it. And thus it said, and the blossoms appeared in the land. The heavens did not give power to the earth until man came. And this is what it says in the third chapter of Genesis, that no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to work the land. All the generations were hidden and not revealed, and the heavens were held back, and it did not rain on the land because there was no man. He was not yet in being and had not yet been created and everything was delayed from being revealed on his account. Once man appeared, straight away the earth gave forth its blossoms, and all the hidden powers were revealed and given to it. So we can see from this piece of the Zohar that all the forces of nature were put into place by the Creator, but were not revealed until man came. They only came through and were manifest, for the sake of man. The Talmud teaches us that it was not only the physical world, but the higher worlds also were created only for the sake of man. So we need to ask ourselves the question, what is the purpose of this creature, of man, that the Creator would invest so much in him? The sages teach us that the purpose of man is to be like God. The Hebrew phrase is lehidamot le'elion. In what way can we be like God? The sages teach us, just as he is merciful and gracious, so you be merciful and gracious. He is long-suffering and gives goodness to the created beings. His name is the one who is good and does good. It was to create man in his own image that God invested all the forces and powers in the physical and the spiritual worlds. However, the Creator does not reveal himself openly to man. Man is not created through supernatural forces, but through the natural, gradual processes of nature. If God were to relate to man in a supernatural way, Man would only relate to him through his will to receive, through his created nature. For like all created beings, man has the will to receive inside him. If God were to reveal himself openly to man, man would take this revelation to increase his selfish love. Man, as part of his nature, wants to know things, wants to understand things, wants certainty. If God was to reveal himself so man knew for certain it was God, This would just increase his ego, and man would not be able to connect with God in the way that God connects with him, which is through unconditional love, unconditional giving. So God hides himself in the world, hides himself in the processes of the world, and in the processes of nature. Indeed, the word for world in Hebrew is olam, which comes from the word alam, ayin lamad mem, meaning hidden. So God gave us a different way of connecting with him, the way of faith. Faith in the divine as the creator of the world and faith in the divine providence that all God gives us is good. 
If you want to think about faith, you can certainly see that faith is a gift. Giving someone your faith is giving him the precious gift of believing in him. Giving God your faith is giving him the greatest gift of loving him unconditionally. But the Zohar continues. But then man sinned and the earth was cursed because of him. And this is what is written in Genesis. The land is cursed for your sake. And further, when you work the land, it will not give its strength, but thistles and thorns will grow for you. From this piece, we can see clearly that the natural state of the world is completely dependent on the actions of man. Indeed, the rabbis teach us further that trouble only comes to the world because of Israel. In order to understand this sentence, we need to know that there are two forces in the person, the force of giving with connection to God and our fellow man, and this is called Israel, from the language Yashar El, straight to God, whereas the aspects of our other selves, the egoistical aspects, are called the nations of the world. These two aspects are within every human being, Jew and non-Jew. We all have the aspect of Israel within us, and we all have the aspect of the nations of the world within us. So every catastrophe that happens, whether natural or private, we have to look at the aspect of the Israel within us. Are we valuing our aspect of Israel? Are we enhancing it? Are we practicing the adage of the psalmist, turn from evil and do good? In the wake of the hurricane that hit the coast of America this week, I have to look inside myself and say, have I had a part to play in this in some way? Because I can't point the finger at anybody else. The only person who can do my work is myself. So I have to look and say, where is my aspect of Israel? Is there some aspect of Israel within me that I can enhance and help make the world a better place for everyone. The whole world together is one soul. We are all the one unique soul that God breathed into Adam. Each one of us has our own part to play. When a natural disaster hits, we can take the opportunity to realise that the forces of nature are reflecting our own consciousness. Each one can look within himself and say, Am I more like God? Can I be more compassionate and merciful and be the man for whom God created the world?